So I'm going to talk to you um, about meeting and challenging your inner procrastinator. So hopefully you've got those pens and, and pieces of paper ready because this whole session is going to be interactive. We're going to work on you being able to meet who your inner procrastinator is. And we're going to think about how you might be able to go forwards to challenge your inner procrastinator. Okay, first of all, how much do you procrastinate? So let's have a little look at some of these questions. So you could maybe pick out a few or you can answer all five. So each question I'll read out and I want you to score yourself a number between one and five. So if you score yourself one, you're saying this is never true for me. I am not a procrastinator, I'm Mr. or Mrs. first things first. If you score yourself a three, you're somewhere in the middle. And if you score yourself a five, then you're a big procrastinator and you're basically saying tomorrow is my middle name. So let's have a look through each question. So if you don't agree with it, give yourself a one, not true for you. If you do strongly agree with it, give yourself a five. And if you're somewhere in between, then give yourself a two, a three or a four. Okay, so first of all, I don't spend my time wisely. Give yourself a score. Number two, I delay tasks beyond what is reasonable. Give yourself a score. Question number three, if there is something I should do, I still attend to lesser tasks first. And give yourself a score. Question number four, I often regret not getting to tasks sooner. Give yourself a score. In question number five, I put things off for so long that my well-being or my efficiency unnecessarily suffers and give yourself a score. Now, I realise that this is like a, a, a quiz that you might see in a Cosmopolitan magazine. So <laughs> we'll just <laughs> embrace the um, little quiz um, to start off with. So by default, what we've done here is we've defined procrastination. So if you have scored yourself, have a look across those five and give, it doesn't have to be accurate. We're just doing it now to get a sense. So give yourself your average score. So would you say you're nearer to one? Those things didn't really apply to you. Were you nearer to a five? They apply 100% to you. Uh, are you somewhere in between? And I would say that when I was creating this presentation, I would probably have given myself a five which is both I guess honest um, and also it shows how you know even when you know this stuff you've still got to cue yourself to reflect on it so hopefully you've got a score let's have a look at the next slide okay point number two why do we procrastinate so you might have got a score there where it looks like oh you're very high on procrastinating and you might think okay I already knew that but this has confirmed it and oh gosh do I need to do something about this? Because is it going to be really affecting my productivity? So let's have a look now at this question. Why do we procrastinate? Now, a classic assumption might be, if we're more motivated, then we'll procrastinate less. So the background assumption is, let's get more motivated and we'll stop procrastinating. So lots of things in organizations are all about pushing motivation, you know, through performance management systems, for example, it's all about motivating employees to perform in order to be productive. That's one area um, I actually teach, or I teach that area on a, on a master's course. Um, so for example, we might say, if there's people who are the types of people who just action things, even when they don't think they're worth the trouble, if there's types of people who action things because they feel they'd feel bad if they didn't. If there's types of people who action things because they do it because they want to gain knowledge or, or stimulation or they want to achieve something. We might say if there's the types of people who action things because they don't want to disappoint and let people down. These basically are different motivational mechanisms. And the assumption I guess you probably all agree with, is if those things are better, if those things are, are really true for a person, then they're going to be less likely to procrastinate. 
However, this is not what the research necessarily supports. The implication of that is if we just work on motivating our employees or ourselves, we're not necessarily going to reduce procrastination. And if we don't reduce procrastination, we're not going to achieve productivity. So I'm not saying motivation isn't important. It 100% is. But there's other aspects that are contributing to procrastination in a more extreme way. We still need motivation for other things, though. OK, so basically, as I said, we're, we're, we're not liking that assumption. We don't think it's really holding up. It's not just all about motivation. However, now I will say that this um, work I'm presenting is not based on a research paper I've done. It's based on this paper by Robetz in 2015. Now, what they said is those different aspects of motivation weren't connecting to procrastination. However, one aspect does, and that's about identifying um, this type of motivation. So if people uh, do a task in order to help themselves become the person they want to be, or they choose to do a task in, a, in order to attain what they desire, then that form of motivation does relate to procrastination. So there is still something to do with motivation. Okay, next point. So if there's only one aspect of motivation that's, that's predicting procrastination, what on earth are these naughty things that are going on within us, cognitively, emotionally, that are causing us to procrastinate? What's driving your inner procrastinator? So we're going to have a really quick high level look at what your underlying mechanisms are. If we can work out what your mechanisms are, then we'll be able to work out how best to, to improve them. So, let, sorry, let me just move, move that. So the, um, the first question is, so you're going to give your score on this. So we're interested in... Step one, let's have a look at your level of impulsivity in terms of urgency. So to what extent do you agree with the following? So you're going to rate yourself low, middle or high. So if you give yourself a high score, then you're finding this, you're really agreeing with it. You're, you're finding things really urgent. Uh, the first question is, when I am upset, I often act without thinking. So if that is really true for you, give yourself a high score. So just write H or something to remember. So this is for urgency. So make a note, urgency. And then the first one, if you agree with it, you're going to give yourself a high. If you neither here nor there, give yourself a middle. And if you're low, give yourself a low. Next question. I act without thinking when I'm really excited. So if that happens for you a lot, give yourself a high. If you're somewhere in the middle, give yourself an M. And if you're somewhere at the bottom, it's not really true for you, give yourself a low. Then what's your average overall? So are you going to say you're a high, you're a middle or you're a low on, in terms of urgency overall? Now, um, Emma, sorry, just to, to interrupt. I can't actually see when if you're going to give me the five minute warning, just just speak on on here so I can I can hear you. Um, no problem. Yeah. So, OK, next of all, we're going to score ourselves in terms of self-control. So impulsivity in terms of self-control. So to what extent do you agree with the following? First question. My thinking is typically not careful and purposeful. So if you give yourself, if you really agree with that, give yourself high. If you don't agree with it, give yourself a low. And if you're somewhere in between, give yourself a middle. Next question. I don't typically finish what I start. Do you agree with that? Give yourself a high. In the middle, give yourself a middle. You don't agree with it, give yourself a low. Next question. I welcome you and exciting experiences and sensations, even if they're frightening and unconventional. If you really agree, give yourself a high. If you're somewhere in the middle, middle. And if you don't agree at all, give yourself a low. Then taking those three questions, what would you give yourself overall? So would you say you're going to then based on those three, be low, middle or high? And high means you've got high impulsivity self-control. So you're being very impulsive and you're finding it hard to, to have self-control. 
Once you've done that, also make a note in terms of the answer you gave to question two. So what did you say in terms of perseverance? So that second question, what was your score on that? And just put a little star by that and label it perseverance. And then I've just realized that this pink box here is in the wrong place. This one should be under premeditation. So also make a note in terms of what you gave yourself for the first question. And then make a note that that's premeditation. Question number three. How inappropriate are your cognitive emotion regulation strategies? So give yourself a score on these four questions and then we want to see your overall kind of average. So are you really agreeing with it? You're a high or if you're not agreeing with it, you're low. I feel that I am the one to blame for it when there's something unpleasant going on. When there's something unpleasant going on, I often think about how I, I feel about what I have experienced. When there's something unpleasant going on, I continually think how horrible the situation has been. When there's something unpleasant going on, I feel that others are to blame for it and give yourself a score overall on all of those. So would you say you were high, really agreeing with them? Would you say you were middle or would you say you were low? Next question, self-esteem. So to what extent do you agree? On the whole, I am satisfied with myself. Would you say high, medium or low? Now, I would just say under each of these questions I've asked, I've just pulled out one example question from what would have been in the questionnaire. There would actually have been loads of questions for each of these different boxes, but in the interest of time and just to give you a taste. Right, last one, step five of assessing your, your inner uh, gremlins that are contributing to your level of inner procrastination. So we're going to come back to this type of motivation that does relate to procrastination. So in general, I, oh, sorry, in general, I do things in order to become the person I aim to be. Or in general, I do things because I choose them in order to attain what I desire. So if you strongly agree with that, say hi. If you're medium, put medium. If you don't agree with it, put low. Okay. Now let's have a look at the results. Now I'm gonna go through what they basically said in this paper. Now it might be that you can't find an exact type. So there's four types of inner things that are going on that contribute to the level of procrastination. Now, it might be you don't fit completely neatly into one of these categories. So there's just kind of, I want you to just basically hear about the categories and then feel which one you might associate with the most. So having a look at your score of um, impulsivity self-control if you are low on that, then keep paying attention. If you are low on inappropriate regulation strategies, then keep paying attention. If you are high on self-esteem, then keep paying attention. If you are high on the type of motivation, then keep paying attention. Now you guys, you'll be pleased to know, are typically the lowest procrastinators. So hopefully, if this research is generalizable, that will connect to how you rated yourself in terms of the procrastination level at the beginning. Now, the argument here is that these people are really good at self-control. So they're really good at stopping themselves going along when an impulse comes up. They're also really good at stopping um, negative emotion uh, emotions that come up so they are even positive emotions so they're good at re regulating their emotions to stay focused on the task and for these people motivation is important it does actually help them stop procrastinating so for these people you're doing well you need to keep making sure that you um, demonstrate self-control and you don't give in to impulses so keep monitoring how you're doing on that You've got really good emotion regulation strategies. So again, keep going on that. And you your self-esteem is high, which is good. 
Now, the thing you can keep working on is thinking about motivation and how achieving the task is going to really help you be who you want to be. So you can make yourself a little cue card when there's a task you might think, "Mm, not sure about this. Make yourself a cue card to remind yourself that in some way it's going to help you achieve what you want to achieve. Let's have a look at the third type of people. Now, these types of people, are they're, next, they're, they're also not that bad at procrastinating. So these guys are doing well. The difference here is that they have some naughty level of impulsivity coming into play. And they're now not very good at regulating when their emotions um, appear. Now for them, the motivation is also not playing a role to help them stop procrastinating. So for these guys, if you've said you're low on emotion regulation strategies and you've said you're medium on self-control, then you need to work on strategies to help you better regulate your emotions. So one example here would be like mindfulness, meditation, that when you feel very emotional, either positive or negative, you stop your work and you go and do an exercise to sit with those emotions. So you're regulating your emotions better. So for you, you really need to try to work on stopping the emotions um, coming into play. Now, the third, the, the type two, so our third category of people, unfortunately, these people are having um, not a great time in terms of the level of procrastination and how bad it's making them feel. Now, what's causing this is that they're not very good at regulating their emotions. They're high on the impulsivity in terms of urgency. So if you gave yourself a high score for that and you gave yourself a medium score on premeditation and perseverance, then you guys are basically at risk of procrastinating. And the reason here is that, again, you need to, you're not, you're not, the motivation doesn't play a big role in stopping you procrastinate. And the self-esteem doesn't play a big role in stopping you procrastinate. So you have to work on here, your emotion regulation strategies again, and not basically the impulsivity self-control. So this is where, um, things might come up that that um, distract you, you've got to get better at stopping things, distract, distracting your attention. So whether that's um, uh, things within the work itself or things externally, they're the things that are causing procrastination uh, for you guys. Then the last type is um, these sets of people characteristically have the highest level of procrastination. So this means that these people really need to try to work out um, what they can do in order to address these inner um, mechanisms that are contributing to them procrastinating. Now, again, we'll see on the the right hand side that these people typically have um, low, uh, low motivation. And they also have low self-esteem. But what's happening here is it's actually the role of the self-control and the the regulation strategies um, that are now, again, causing such a big issue. So if we look back at the ones before, these guys before could rely to some extent on their level of motivation. Whereas for the third, the last category of people, the level of motivation isn't that helpful for them. So what they basically need to do is they need to ensure that they're regulating their emotions and they're also really working hard on this this degree of self-control. So that's basically the end of the presentation. Um, So I can open it up to uh, questions or we can take questions at the end, whatever Emma would prefer. Um, But yeah, that's just a little flavour. So obviously you're not going to be able to have necessarily gone through and got your head around all the questions in the time, but when you get given the slides, you can have a look again and and have a have a a look at how you're coming out. The key is that there's going to be different suggestions for improving procrastination for different people. That was amazing. Thank you, Becky. Um, I have a few questions actually. So you mentioned about people need to try um stop procrastinating and 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 stop um 
sort of getting distracted by things. Have you got any tips for people and ways to do that? Yeah, so the peep, so when um, we look at the ones who um, are really being effective, affected, sorry, by this, um, this self-control one, basically um, the, the, the best tips are things like, um, and it sounds like a cliche, but think, you know, but we're not cliche, but things that you hear all the time, but actually they're going to be making a bigger difference to these sets of people than to other people. But things like um, their, their attention. So how can they keep their attention more focused on a task? So it might be, you know, based on cognitive psychology, we can only attend to something the maximum is 45 minutes. So you don't do longer bursts of time than that if you're somebody who is high procrastinator and you scored high on this issue of self-control. Other things is things like uh, physically block your emails or other things that are basically going to be something that um, that could distract you. So if there's something, so instead of it being, I need to get better at being able to deal, do the self-control, you accept you're not very good at doing the self-control. So you try to actually reduce the distractions um, in the first place. Another thing is you could experiment throughout the day to see if are your levels of self-control better at one point of the day than another point of the day. And it might be, say, for example, I'm I'm an evening, you know, I'm a night owl. So it might be that if I'm high on self-control and I get distracted by these impulses, I can actually better deal with them when it's the evening because I'm an evening person. So if there's something that's a task that's really high priority, then I think about when is it in the day that this self-control is, is the biggest issue for me. Um, so there's basically, you either try to help yourself with the self-control, which might not necessarily be doable at all for you. It might just be, that's what you have to deal with. And if so, then you work on physically changing the disruption so that there's nothing to have to self-control to. Fantastic, amazing, thank you. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them now. Um, I know Jennifer's mentioned there that she uses Pomodoro. I'm not familiar with that one. Becky, are you? Yeah, so Pomodoro is basically where you do a burst of 25 minutes um, work and then there'll be like some, I can't remember, it's like maybe a five minute break and then you come back and you do a burst of 25 minutes. So one thing of self-control is not just about being distracted by external things, but it's also in terms of your attention, how much attention you can you can keep. And some people might only be able to keep 10 minutes, but that's fine. It doesn't matter how long you can keep your attention for. What matters is that you work in a way that's consistent with that. So if you can only do it for 10 minutes, you do 10 minutes and then have a three minute break. If you can do it for 45 minutes, do the task for 45 minutes and then have a 10 minute break. So it's about kind of reflecting and learning um, what you're like as a person. Perfect, sounds really good. Thank you for that, Becky.